muted. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll start the session. So, uh, in morning session, we discussed about the packages. So now we'll concentrate on the interfaces. Okay. So interface basically defines what is called as contract. Okay. Interface defines a contract. That must be followed by classes that implement this particular interface. Okay. Followed by, uh, followed by classes that implement a particular interface. Okay. So the interface specifies what a class must do. Okay. What a class must do. And uh, it is not dependent on, or it won't specify any implementation. Okay. Specific implementation. It just says what a particular uh, class which is implementing this particular, in, which is implementing a, uh, which is implementing an interface needs to do. Okay. It just uh, uh, declares what needs to be set of rules, it uh, declares set of rules which needs to be followed by uh, the class. Okay. So what I, what else it does? It abstracts all the all the methods inside of a particular interface or abstract methods. Implicitly they are abstract methods. Okay. So similarly, similar to classes, they are I mean syntactically they are similar to classes, but one uh, uh, but the differences are like they won't have instance variables. Okay, they will not have instance variables. You will see why they will not have instance variables. And all the methods are declared without body. All the methods are declared without body. They will just uh, we will just mention the name of the type return type, the name name of the method, and then parameter list, and then terminate it with semicolon. Okay, and then once defined. The, once you define a particular interface, you can any number of classes can implement that particular interface. Okay, we will see all these things with the examples. Okay, so once a particular interface is defined, any number of classes can implement that particular interface. Okay, once a class uh, also a one particular class can in implement any number of interfaces. We have seen right uh, inheritance in inheritance. particular class can uh, inherit only one uh, uh, super class okay parent class uh, uh, child class can implement uh, inherit only one particular parent class or subclass can implement only one super class but here a class can implement any number of interfaces okay not just one interface a class can implement any number of interfaces okay so once uh, once you tell okay so i have one interface a okay and then b implement a okay b implements a say for example this a has uh, 10 methods okay a has 10 methods so when you, when b implements uh, a uh, b mentioned that all these methods are uh, methods will not have body right so when b implements a b, b should provide implementation for all these 10 methods okay b should provide an implementation for all these 10 methods if you don't if you if you don't or if b doesn't provide the implementation for all the methods it should be declared as abstract okay we will see all those things and also with this interfaces uh, the polymorphism Java implements one more uh, type of polymorphism that is one one interface and multiple methods. Say for example you have uh, one particular interface and B implements this particular interface. C also can implement this particular interface. Okay, D also can implement this particular interface. You have abstract methods here. Abstract methods. So B will have one uh, implementation for uh, the abstract methods defined inside the A. C will have one implementation for abstract methods defined in A. B also will have uh, another type of implementation for same methods defined in your declared in your A interface. Okay. So all these three things define same same interface that is methods 
but provide different implementation but provide different implementation ok. So, also we have seen what is dynamic method resolution right dynamic method resolution dynamic method dispatch. So, interfaces are designed to support dynamic method uh, resolution as well at runtime right. So, respective uh, uh, it depends on uh, the type of the object ok. Uh, which method is called depends on type of the object ok. We will see all those things with an example. So, how do we define an interface? It is defined similar to like how we define a particular class we have access specifiers ok. Instead of class we use interface keyword and we specify the identifier name. name of the interface ok. So, it, it will have static final variables ok. That is why since uh, these are all whatever the variables that you declare inside uh, your interface they will be by implicit they will be static and final ok. So, static and final means they are constant global constant. global constants in the sense any inter any class that implements that particular interface these are available to that particular uh, class and we cannot change those things because they be they will become constant ok. We will see all these things and then you define different methods you define methods similar to how you define a, a method in, a, in your class, but one the one difference is they will not have body associated with them ok. Implementation details we will not provide in an interface ok. So, similar similar this is our uh, uh, return type method name and then we specify the parameter list and then end with a semicolon ok. This is how you declare or define a particular interface ok. So, wherever you are saving this particular interface right uh, it follows the same rules as uh, your class ok. Uh, so, whenever you are trying to save a particular public interface the name of the uh, interface should be uh, the name of the file ok. So, name should be a valid uh, we know uh, what is a valid identifier valid identifier. So, name should be a valid identifier ok. So, how do we define an interface so, let us see an example ok. just uh, one particular interface we have defined one particular interface yes ok. So, the interface name is runnable ok just uh, just randomly I took this name uh, do not uh, confuse this with any other uh, runnable if you know anything ok. And uh, the access specifier is public and then we specify the keyword interface instead of class we have specified the keyword interface ok. We specified the class no, instead of class we have specified the keyword interface and as you notice here it has only one method ok that is can run ok. So, as you notice it does not have it does not have a body associated with it ok. So, uh, this is how you define interfaces you can see the other uh, multiple interfaces as well ok. So, there are ok. So, there are other uh, this is another interface where it does not uh, specify anything it just specifies the variables 
okay we will see how these variables can be used all those things okay and a few more interfaces I'll just take a simple interfaces okay so this is how we define an interface okay so methods what are the things that we should uh, remember about interfaces we use a word keyword interface okay we use the word we use the keyword interface and methods will not have bodies okay they end with semicolon okay Yeah, Kavita is asking, access specifier should always be public. Yeah, we will see that, uh, Kavita. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, we will see, uh, should always be public. Yeah. yeah, whatever the method that you specify inside an interface is, by default, they will be public. Not only methods, whatever the variables that you specify, right, they will also be, by default, they will be public. Okay. So, methods are always, like, uh, always abstract. Okay. In case of uh, our abstract classes, abstract uh, methods, we, speci we specify a particular method as abstract by using abstract keyword. Okay, do you remember that? So we use, uh, uh, we use that specific method is an abstract method by using the keyword abstract. But here, we will not use any such things. We will just mention the name of the method, type, name, and then parameter list. And that's semicolon. We don't use the keyword abstract here in interface. Okay. So by default, all the methods that you define inside your interface are abstract methods. So no need of using abstract keyword inside your uh, interfaces. Okay. All the, all methods are interfaces. They must be in the abstract methods. No default method. We won't provide any default methods for uh, any of the methods that are defined inside your interfaces. That is not at all allowed. Okay, default in method implementation means like uh, uh, we have seen in one of the examples, right? Figure. So the area we have for figure we have, we have provided no uh, no proper area while calculating the area. We have uh, defined like no proper uh, no, um, uh, area is un undefined because we cannot uh, say that a particular figure is of such type. That is just a parent class. And from that particular figure, we derive multiple figures. Say, for example, circle, rectangle, triangle, all those things. Circle, rectangle, triangle, all those figures will have their own areas. We'll have formula to calculate those areas. But for figure, we will not be able to calculate uh, this one. What is that uh, area? Area is undefined. So we provided, for uh, initially, we provided uh, default implementation for that abstract method. Okay? Default implementation. So that particular, when we made the area as abstract method, the class became abstract class, right? Uh, so similarly, we will not be able to provide default method implementation for any of the methods. Not be able to provide. will not be able to provide default implementation for any of the methods that is not allowed okay and whatever the variables they lack instance variables remember they lack instance variable okay will not will not be able to define any instance variable within your interface even though they are similar to the classes will not be able to provide any instance variables or different instance variables inside your interfaces. So whatever the uh, variables that you define inside uh, your interface, they will be implicitly, they will be static and final. Give me a second. Yeah, by default, uh, the variables, whatever the variables that you define inside your interface, they will be static and final. So static, we know it defines global variable, right? Global variable and final, 
final defined constant. So, these whatever the variables that you define inside an interface, they will become global constant. They will become global constants. Okay, you can share constants across multiple. multiple classes. So, we will see all those things okay and all methods. So, since they are final they must be initialized during your declaration while you are uh, declaring a particular variable you must initialize that. If you do not initialize uh, you will see compile time error okay. So, all methods and variables are implicitly public. You can define them with public okay you can define them with public, but that is public is it will become redundant this particular keyword becomes redundant. So, you can define with public return type method, but this is not required ok. Implicitly they will be public, implicitly they will be public ok. So, things are variables are static and final and methods both the variables as well as methods are public. Okay. So, why the why we will not have instance variable because of static and final variables ok. So, how do we use when once you define an interface how can we implement an interface in an in a particular class ok we will see that one. So, once an interface is defined you can implement uh, or it can be implemented in any number of classes. Okay, it can be implemented in any number of classes. How do we do that? We will use the keyword implement. Okay, we will use the keyword implement in our class definition. In our class definition, we will use the implement keyword or clause in our class definition. Okay, the syntax is this is your class. Okay, and this is the access specifier for your class. Class keyword. This is your class and this is the keyword for implementing your interface. After this keyword you specify the interface. You can specify single interface or you can specify multiple interfaces. We will see some examples ok. And then you provide whatever the methods that are defined or declared inside your interface or we have to this particular class uh, must provide must provide implementation detail. That is the code the logic that uh, what a particular method does that logic you have to implement uh, inside this particular class ok. It is a must ok. If you do not want to implement all the methods inside your interface that are declared in your interface defined inside your interface this particular class must be modified as abstract ok. Otherwise, you will see compile time error ok. It, it specifically says eclipse in eclipse it specifically says we have to implement I mean it will uh, as soon as you try to implement it, it will give the definition for I mean it will give default implementation which will have nothing inside the, the body in your uh, class ok that is uh, in your eclipse. So, more than one particular class can interface more than one uh, 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 interface. So, when, when you are specifying more than one interface, each interface is separated by comma ok. Each interface is separated by comma. Say for example, I have interface A, I have interface B ok and I have class C which implements both. I will like both implements A comma B ok. Say for example, this has method 1 and this has method 2 ok. So, this should provide implementation we have we have not specified any implementation for this uh, uh, these two methods right. So, class C must provide implementation for method 1 
okay and method two okay we will say we have to specify both if i don't want to specify any of these methods i should modify this class definition as abstract this we have seen in our uh, inheritance uh, session right one of the inheritance session so if at all you want uh, you, if at all you, you want to inherit a, an abstract class and if you don't want to provide implementation for abstract uh, methods inside your abstract class you can specify the subclass as abstract class and proceed further okay but in case of inheritance we can inherit only one superclass okay you can inherit only one superclass but in case of uh, uh, interfaces we can implement multiple interfaces multiple implement uh, multiple interfaces okay you can implement multiple interfaces this is how uh, multiple inheritance is achieved in java multiple inheritance is achieved in java using your interfaces okay so what 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 we discussing we will, if we, if you implement two interfaces so you should provide the implementation details for both the methods that are there in our uh, two interfaces for that matter any number of interfaces say for example class uh, class a implements uh, uh, C, b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t interfaces okay so what are the methods defined in all the interfaces that should be uh, provide implementation for all those things should be provided by class a okay apart from that if two classes define two or two interfaces define same method okay this is also possible say for example you have interface a uh, method okay and b Method. same same signature okay method is same name name signature everything is same and if a class implements uh, both a and b a and b it has to provide only one method one uh, definition that is enough okay because both are same okay so this is usually we will not do this way like it is if you provide only one implementation that is enough because these two are same right same method so methods that are implemented in a in a class methods that are implemented in a class they must be declared as it is a must okay they must be declared as public so whatever the class that implements a and b okay all the methods must be declared as public why can anyone tell me why can anyone tell me why they must be declared as public can anyone tell me why they must be declared as public yeah it should be implemented it should be implemented they will be used by multiple uh, classes and all all those things are fine so kavita is telling because uh, it should be implemented so yeah access is also fine but uh, by default what what did we discuss like by default okay by default or implicitly all the variables and uh, methods will be public in an interface right so when you are implementing yeah they uh, abhi just telling uh, they may be accessible uh, uh, to other interfaces of the class otherwise that's right yeah everything is fine but implicitly what are the specifier for this uh, inter, uh, methods is defined inside a particular uh, interface by implicitly or by default they are all public uh, whether it is a variable or whether it is a uh, we have specified here right specified here. all methods and variables are implicitly public public so when you are implementing the signature should match exactly whatever the methods that you are implementing inside a class right which extends the particular interface they must match the exact uh, signature 
for a particular uh, method in an interface. Okay, that is what we are saying here. Type signature of the implementing method must match exactly the type signature specified in your in, uh, interface definition. We won't specify public. We can specify, but uh, we will not specify public inside your method definition. Simply because that will be by default they are public. By default they are public. That is why we will not specify the keyword public whenever we are uh, declaring any method in your uh, interface. Okay, so you can define. So the signature when you are implementing a particular method in a class, the signature type signature should match exactly. Okay, the signature of signature of the method should match exactly as it is in your as it is declared in your interface, and they must be public because they are by default they are public. So you must declare them as public when you are implementing in a in a class. Okay. So the class when you are implementing a particular class, it does not mean that it cannot define any other things. Okay, it, it it does not mean that it cannot have interface or in instance variables or any other methods methods defined inside the particular class. It can have any other the, like uh, any other class that you define, right? It can have you can define that particular method in the, that way. Say for example, it can have its own interface uh, instance variables and it can have its own method. Apart from that, you can have instance. It should implement the interface method which it implements. The interface that it implements, it should uh, provide implementation details for those methods. Okay, so it is a normal class. The class which implements, it's a normal class, but one condition is it should provide implementation. It, it must provide implementation for all the methods for all the methods defined inside your interface. This particular interface. Apart from that, it can have non-interface methods or instance variables, what not. Okay. So let us see how an example. So we have runnable interface. Okay, we have runnable interface, and this is implemented by animal and humans. Okay, runnable interface. Let us bring these two things here. And then we have one class, test class. Okay, not test class. Okay, you have to get. Okay, so this is the one. Okay, so it, this is the interface that we have defined. It has uh, one method that is our can run method. So since uh, they are by default they are public, I am not specified public here. Okay, it does not mean that I cannot specify public here. Okay, I can specify public. Okay, that is also valid. But this becomes redundant because by default uh, all the methods and variables are public. Okay, so animal implements can run. Okay, this is this is called as uh, uh, annotation in Java annotation. Okay, so we will discuss about annotation in one of the sessions. Okay, we will. Uh, this is nothing but a, some uh, it assigns some it gives some specific specific meaning to uh, certain methods, classes, all those things. Okay, instance variables, all those things. You can uh, give those things. Okay, these are called as annotations. And also we have human that also have implements the runnable interface. You can see the keyword implements. We are using keyword implements. Okay, and we have provided implementation for the particular class. Okay, and then we are testing it. Here we are testing it. Okay, what are we trying to do? We have tried to create an instance of human. And then calling that particular method. So also here we have specified public. The access specifier must be public. Okay. Public. So let us see what happens if we remove that. So it are, it immediately shows error. We cannot reduce the visibility of an inherited method from runnable. 
okay can run is a uh, inherited method okay from our since uh, this one runnable interface okay by default this is public okay we are trying to modify that visibility to only we are restricting the visibility of this particular uh, method to a package by not providing public uh, access specifier here okay what are we doing that public means it is accessible throughout the world right any or any code can access this particular method but we are uh, restricting it, restricting it to one particular package that is this package which is not allowed say for example you have uh, uh, you have a uh, abstract uh, method uh, sorry to divert it from uh, interface to abstract method so if you specify an abstract method with uh, specifier like uh, uh, not protected default assume that you have provided the uh, access specifier as default inside an abstract class say void can run okay this is an abstract method remember this is an abstract method inside a abstract class okay so here we have not specified any access specifier okay we have not specified any access specifier so the class that implements say for example this is an uh, this is inside abstract class a okay and b in b extend b extends a okay since a is an abstract uh, class and it has abstract method can run okay it should provide can run implementation okay so it will be like you can provide either like this void can run okay whatever implementation details you want to provide you can provide here or you can provide like this public void can run so can anyone specify uh, can anyone uh, note down the difference between this method definition and this method definition can anyone tell me what is the difference between this method definition and this method definition and then tell me the difference this method definition and this method definition no yeah well okay so let me unmute uh, kavita he is telling there is no difference yeah why do you why yeah he is telling yeah correct so one is public this is public method this is we have not specified any access specifier here right so that means this will be default method what is the access uh, uh, or visibility of this particular uh, method it is restricted only within package it is visible only within particular package where this uh, b and uh, a, a are residing okay where you have the which package you have specified for these two things it is restricted only for that particular package but here this particular method you can access anywhere from anywhere uh, any anyone can access because it is specified as public okay but what are this uh, what are what is the signature of this one this method that is declared as abstract in your abstract class it is default okay default means minimum access or visibility that you must provide in uh, class that extends this is default okay minimum access uh, access uh, uh, visibility okay minimum visibility it should this particular method uh, which implements the class which implements this particular method should have is default okay apart from that you can provide public also anything which is uh, more than public okay but we cannot define private void private void can run inside your class b which extends a 
because you are restricting the uh, visibility should be at least whatever you have specified here okay when declaring your method a strike method minimum uh, visibility should be this one and you can go uh, above like this minimum is this one maximum is public right but you cannot go uh, below that one minimum uh, below uh, whatever the access that you have provided in your while declaring your method okay you cannot provide like this it will show error that is what is happening in our case here okay when you hover it uh, it's, it says it clearly says cannot reduce the visibility of the inherited method from runnable so it must be public because by default any uh, method that you specify in your interface is public okay that is why we must uh, make uh, the uh, visibility as public in your class which implements that particular method okay understood uh yeah kavita go ahead and ask your question yeah actually i thought that a and b both are interface and they are having oh, okay, uh, okay. The, yeah so i thought a okay. class a is extending i mean the one interface is extending b b so correct b what whatever i was telling is a here right before whatever i was telling a is an interface but b is a class that implements the interface uh, no it is abstract class a is abstract class and b was uh, implementing or extending that particular class did i mention implements that uh, i don't know no 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 uh, i mean uh, that a and b both are interface and a interface is extend i mean extends the b it. interface i i thought in that okay. way so uh, okay okay so that's why i specified that abstract method right abstract keyword i used that abstract keyword and the b extends uh, a okay and then i was explaining the accessibility so in that abstract method we have specified the default uh, access level right so the specific, specified access specifier was the default so minimum uh, access specifier should be the in the class which implements the abstract method should be default or you can go uh, above in the first like public so you cannot provide private access specifier to the class which uh, uh, implements that abstract method that is what i was trying to explain okay so with respect to this one here if you remove this public right it will show error visibility cannot be reduced you cannot reduce the visibility of a particular method the visibility of a method inside your interface is uh, public so it should be minimum should be public you cannot reduce the visibility of a method inside your uh, uh, interface which you provide implementation in your class okay so that is why all the methods must be public because methods that are in your interfaces are by default they are public okay so we have provided implementation for this because we are implementing this runnable interface and human we are providing our uh, default implements runnable so we have provided uh, run uh, method uh, implementation or okay, implementation for this run method let us try to implement uh, this uh, method okay it provides uh, this one but i will remove all these things okay okay let me remove all these things so it will show error okay incomplete implementation implement runnable so it says you have to implement so it says uh, must implement inherited abstract method runnable can run otherwise you can fix it using abstract like we did for abstract method okay like we did for uh, abstract method in inheritance when we when a particular subclass won't implement an abstract method in your super class we have to specify that subclass also as abstract okay so similarly if you don't want to provide implementation in this particular class for the methods which are implemented by this particular class we can specify that class as abstract okay but here these two implement that's why we have not specified any abstract uh, we have not modified the definition as abstract in this case 
okay let us try to so this is one example which is using the uh, the uh, classes which implement the runnable interface so what are we doing here we have defined an uh, instance of human class and we are calling can run method in that interface on that interface okay here what are we doing reference variable of of type runnable we know we know right uh, whenever you define a class it defines user defined data type it defines user defined data type okay so that user defined data type or type can be used to declare variables uh, reference variables for whatever the classes that you define or whatever the classes that java provides default classes which comes with your uh, java libraries and all okay similarly interface also defines a specifies a particular type which you can use it for defining or declaring variables of that particular type so runnable here runnable is a reference variable of type runnable class okay in human animals and uh, one other incomplete implementation all those implement the runnable interface it can reference or it can refer to any object that implements that implements runnable interface in our case human implements runnable interface as well as animal interface and implements runnable interface okay so when i call can run method on human object it calls the method that is implemented in your human class human dot java okay when you call uh, can run on your animal object it runs the implementation provided in your animal dot java okay so let us try to let us run this program and see the output okay so you can see uh, you can see the output here so this is the output for the first output is for this one okay we have declared the uh, human reference variable and assign assign the object human object to that particular reference variable so this is the output for this one yes correct correct kaita kaita is telling dynamic display okay so this one is output for this one so because it is human object okay this one is output of this particular uh call okay this is referring to our animal object so here what what is happening dynamic method dispatch is happening here what is happening dynamic method dispatch is happening okay that is how uh, the polymorphism uh, part of uh, your uh, Oops, concept right? Concept comes into picture. So if you clear, if you closely observe, if you closely observe, say here, I have defined one method here, declared one method. It does not have any uh, method implementation here. Okay, it does not have any method implementation. But here, I have provided one implementation. We have only one interface, right? Can run interface is nothing but your uh, method. Okay, we have one method 
animal implements that method in one way, human implements that method in another way, another class which implements this runnable can provide another implementation. Okay, another implementation. So different uh, classes provide different classes will provide different implementation. But what is the interface? The name of the method is same. Right. So the which method is called? There is it depends on the type of the object that you assign to the reference variable of interface. And that is your uh, dynamic method dispatch runtime polymorphism. Right. That is your runtime polymorphism. Okay. So this is what is uh, I, uh, I just explained it. So using interface reference variables, we can access the implementation. We can access the implementation. Yesterday when we were discussing, right, we uh, we we kind of like uh, uh, understood how how powerful this one is. In a sense, like say for example, I have this uh, particular interface. I have this one and this one. Okay. So this is implemented long ago. All these things are implemented long ago. Okay. But now what I can do, I can define one more class which implements this interface. And using the reference variable of this interface, like uh, how I did here, using the reference variable of this interface, I can call the implementation provided now. I can call, I can run the implementation. Say for example, let me take this one only. Okay, I have provided, I have uh, this uh, created this implementation. This implementation, okay. Just now I created it, but what am I doing? I'm not at all touching any of these uh, classes. Not at all touching any of these classes. Okay, they are compiled long back, ten years back. They were comp compiled. All these uh, classes were compiled, created, and compiled, and done everything the ten years back. But today I am creating this particular class. Okay, this particular class I am creating, and notice the difference. I can do. Okay, so what is happening here? I can call the method, right? I can call the method. So on this particular object, reference variable, on this reference variable, that is our uh, runnable interface, runnable interface reference variable, we are calling the code, newly created code. Newly created code. Okay. So what is basically happening? We are not at all touching the code that was created 10 years back. We are not at all touching. We are not at all uh, compiling. We are not at all touching anything. Okay. So through this one, we are trying to call the method implementation provided now, today, just now. Okay. So that is very powerful, right? So that is what is your runtime polymorphism, the need method dispatch. Let us go to the next slide. So partial implementation we have seen one particular class you can create. If you don't want to provide implementation for uh, methods that are in your interface, so you can specify or you can modify that particular class as abstract. Okay. So we have seen in a example for uh, this one that is incomplete implementation so interfaces can be nested so you can provide implementation uh, interfaces inside your class or in another in uh, interface okay let us see an example
So remember, we have specified public. Okay, here this uh, this access specifier is public. Okay, you can anybody can access this particular uh, interface which is defined inside your class. Okay, but how do you, there is an interesting thing? How you can implement that particular uh, interface? Okay, so. Okay, it's not showing. Let us try to access it. Implements. You can, uh, you can uh, how did you mention this inside your interface class? You have defined nested interface. Okay, this is public. Remember, this is public. So anybody can, any class outside of this particular package can access it. Okay, so when you are trying to implement that, what you have to do, you have to go through the class in which that is implemented in the sense. You have to access this dot nested interface. Why? Because can anyone tell me why we have to do this way? Can anyone think and tell me why we have done this way? Because this is a member of this particular interface class, inside class, as any other uh, member like your methods, your instance variables. So how do we access a member? Yeah, it is nested. But exactly why? Why, why it is nested? Uh, Kavita is telling that because it is nested. Why? Uh, yeah, when you nest an interface inside the class, what what it becomes? It becomes a member of that particular class, right? like your instance variables and other methods. So how do you access uh, members of a particular class? Through dot operator, right? Through dot operator. But here, uh, notice here you are not creating an uh, uh, object to access that particular interface. You are just through your class name, you are accessing that interface. Okay? So that is why we have to go through the class name and then call that particular interface, implement that particular interface. Okay, all other things remain same. So if you want to try for to uh, nest an interface within an interface, you can try that as well. Okay, or what else you can do? Interface. Okay. Okay. This is also possible. What did we do? This is the outer interface. This is an inner interface, which is public. Okay. So this, if you make it as default, it will be visible, uh, visible only within your uh, package. Okay. So this is public. How do you access this one? Interface one dot nested interface. Implement any class interface one dot nested interface. So in that case, how uh, the particular class must implement this method as well as this method. Okay. Anyone has any? Anyone need any clarifications or anyone has any doubts regarding this? Nesting an interface. Okay. So variable inside interfaces. So we have, we have been discussing, right? So till now we have not defined any variables in whatever the uh, interfaces that we have uh, are defined. Okay. So as we have discussed, they are static. That is 
global and they are final that is they are constant okay global and constants they are global constants they are global constants okay so let us see an example so here i have defined one particular interface which has all these variables declared okay by default they will be public static final okay by default they are public static final you can specify them as well but that's uh, it's not needed okay public static final int no is zero so the by default they are public static and final so let us see one implementation okay one class which implements that one okay so this class implements shared constants okay which uses all these things in such statement okay and how are we calling since they are uh, since this is a static method just calling directly by passing an integer okay and what are the value that specify corresponding output will be displayed okay let us try to run this particular program so you can see when i pass 10 it shows invalid option it displayed or it executed this statement and when i pass other things 0 to 5 it displays corresponding values constant okay so let us try to change the value here one value okay so it shows final field shared constants dot no cannot be assigned because it is final okay we know the meaning of final right and it is like a global okay so then this is static and final it's a constant the value of 20 that is at the value of 0 which we assigned in our uh, interface cannot be changed because it is a constant it refers to a constant value okay so that is why it cannot be changed since it is a global constant it cannot change okay it cannot assign a value can you assign this 20 means it is a constant right 20 is constant you cannot change the value of 20 to some other thing you cannot call 21 as 20 right because 20 is 20 means it is 20 it's a constant right you cannot change the value of uh, 20 to any other thing right similar to that one you cannot change the value of no to any other value the value of no is zero here that is what uh, we have defined in our constant zero okay no means it is zero the value of no is zero you cannot change it yeah kavita has a question yeah kavita go ahead uh, um, uh, means I have a question regarding that nested interface like okay. uh, you, uh, for example like uh, interface one has uh, a method and ins inside that you have one more interface correct yeah now if I want uh, this interface to be implemented uh, a class is implementing this interface in that only I want the uh, any one interface so I, I should call like implements interface one okay. uh, then so, uh, whatever the nested also yeah. will be coming right hold on one okay When you try to implement, it implements only the method that is inside uh, that interface. It will not bother about uh, any other interfaces that are defined inside it. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. It will implement only the method. That is it. Yeah. Okay. It, it, uh, the method, only methods are visible. Okay. In the, in the other interface which is uh, public, you can access through interface one dot nested interface okay in that case this will be invalid we are implementing only one interface right so it will be that particular interface will be implemented here okay, okay. 
okay yeah and uh, constants right shared constant okay so these are all constants that we have defined constant means you cannot change the value of the particular constant once you declare it okay so that is what your 20 is 20 your 1 is 1 you cannot call 2 as 1 right so similar to that one you cannot change the values that are declared in your interfaces and they are global in the sense if you go here another class using shared constant it implements the shared constant and when you try to print the values those values will be same okay no means 0 yes 1 maybe 2 later 3 soon 4 never 5 okay they are all how many uh, classes were I mean you can implement the particular class interface right shared constant interface in any number of classes okay in all the classes the value remains the same and one more important thing is you cannot change the value here even if you try to assign the same value it will not accept it okay so they are constant global constant so one more important thing is interfaces can be extended okay interfaces can be extended using extends keyword which we used for in inheriting classes inheriting classes so interfaces can inherit another interface using extends keyword okay so when when a particular class implements an interface that extends another interface the class must provide definition for all the methods that are declared in interface as well as the extended interface okay it should provide definition for all the methods that are uh, uh, included in both the interfaces okay so let us see an example okay i have one interface one which defines interface one method I have another interface which defines interface 2 method. I have another interface which in, uh, defines, declares interface 3 method. Okay. And this is the class which implements interface 3. Okay. But here notice interface 3 extends to other interfaces, interface 1 and interface 2. Okay interface 3 extends interface 1 and interface 2 as well as it declares another in method interface 3 method okay what is exactly happening now when you try to extend interface 3 the class test class must provide definition for all the methods interface 1 method interface 2 method interface 3 method okay this is same this is similar to this way okay assume that you have uh, interface 3 does not extend uh, these two things okay let us remove this definition okay let us remove from here and test class now implements all the three interfaces okay and it provides definition for all the three methods inside each interface interface 1 interface 2 interface 3 okay and interface one interface can extend another interface using keyword interface extends interface 1 comma interface 2 okay so the definition declaration for these two methods these two methods are uh, methods declared in these two interfaces are available inside the interface 3 that is why when we just try to uh, implement interface 3 uh, we have to provide definition for all the methods all the three methods okay okay i think uh, uh, with this we have covered the packages as well as and interfaces interfaces 
Okay, okay. Tomorrow we will uh, see exception handling. Okay, tomorrow we will see exception handling, and uh, we will try to cover as much as possible. Okay, so tomorrow's class will be at 8:30, 8:30 to 10. Okay, so with this, uh, I am done with the discussion. So if you have any question, we can uh, discuss about that. Otherwise, we can end this session. Does anyone has any doubts, or anyone has anyone wants any uh, clarification regarding any of the concepts that we discussed till now? Okay, so let us uh, end up this session. We'll meet tomorrow at 8.30. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks a lot for attending this uh, session. Bye.